Honorable Speaker, thank you for this opportunity. The Honorable Ekomas Mutuse, the member for Kibwezi West, approached me with the impeachment motion. Honorable Speaker, I took some time not just to go through the grounds that he had uh, stipulated for the impeachment of the Deputy President, but also to reflect on what Honorable Mutuse was asking me not just as a member of parliament for Kikuyu and leader of majority party in this house to do, but also took time to reflect and ask the almighty God to guide me and give me wisdom to do the right thing. Honorable Speaker, I pray to God that the almighty God may give me wisdom to do that which is right. And not just what is right, Honorable Speaker, but also what is just. Just to the outgoing Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, but also just, more importantly, just to the people of Kenya who turned out in their numbers in 2022 to vote in a government that they believed would create cohesion and unity and offer them opportunities to excel and prosper as a people. Honorable Speaker, as I prayed for wisdom, I was also conscious that what is right is not always easy. And what is right is not always popular. And being a son of the mountain, representing people of the Mount Kenya region, Honorable Speaker, it was clear to me that what may be popular today may not be right. And that is why I ask God to give me the wisdom to do that what is right, Honorable Speaker. And I am here today to do what is right for the people of Kenya. I am here to do what is right, not just for the people of Mount Kenya. I am here to do what is right for the greater good of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Speaker. And that is why I rise to support this impeachment motion, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, having listened to Honorable Mutuse and all the grounds, and having looked at the Constitution, Honorable Speaker, and I would beg for us to look at Article 150 on the removal of a deputy president, the reasons as to why you may remove a deputy president from office. The first one is on the ground of physical or mental incapacity to perform the functions of that office. We have no capacity to determine the physical and mental capacity of the deputy president regarding Gashagua. But on impeachment as a second ground, the first ground is on the ground of gro a gross violation of a provision of this constitution or any other law. The question that begs is whether one Rigavi Joffrey Gashagua has contravened or has grossly violated one provision of the, our constitution. And I think the Honorable Ekomas Mutuse was able to demonstrate this morning that Rigavi Gashagua has violated not one, but over eight provisions of our constitution, which I agree with the Honorable Mutuse. And for that reason, Rigavi Gashagua ought and must be impeached today. The second ground, Honorable Speaker, is where there are serious reasons. And Senior Counsel Otiende Amolo went to great length this morning to explain what serious, when you believe there are serious reasons that the Deputy President has committed a crime under national or international law. Honorable Speaker, behind the veneer of humility that you have seen here this evening, behind the veneer of humility that Kenyans saw on national TVs on Sunday, pretending to apologize, is a dark face 
of violence is a dark face, Honorable Speaker, that is a great danger to our nationhood, a great danger to the unity of our republic, Honorable Speaker, a danger to the cohesive existence of our nation as we, so we, we see it today, Honorable, Honorable Speaker. On the first ground, Honorable Speaker, on the remark of Serikali Nikampuni, it pains me, Honorable Speaker, as I say, not just as leader of majority, but as a member of parliament of Kikuyu constituency, and also as a son of the mountain, where I come from. That's Honorable Speaker, today, the community I come from is being depicted as a community that is entitled and privileged. We are a community, Honorable Speaker, that has love for other Kenyans and other communities in our republic. We are a community that is known for our hard work and resilience, not for entitlement. We are a community that is peace-loving and that believes in the unity of one indivisible nation and republic of Kenya. Rigathi Gashagua does not believe in an indivisible country. He believes in parochial, selfish, regional and sectarian interests. And for that reason, Honorable Speaker, we ought and we should impeach the Honorable Rigathi Gashagua. Honorable Speaker, we need to ask ourselves as Honorable Members of Parliament, who took an oath of office, Honorable Speaker, and we swore in the name of the Almighty God that we would obey, respect, uphold, protect and defend this constitution. And today, Honorable Speaker, what we are being asked to do is to recall those words of the oath of office that we all took, either with the Bible or the, with the Holy Quran, in our right hands, Honorable Speaker, that for a man who has grossly violated our constitution, whether we will stand up today to be counted as protecting and defending this constitution, by sending home one Rigathi Gashagua, Honorable Speaker. I want to say I rise to the occasion today to do what is right and to reaffirm that oath that I took with the Bible in my right hand to obey, to defend, and to protect this constitution that we all saw to defend. And I call upon all of you, Honorable Members, to defend this constitution. Honorable Members, for Kenyans around the country who watched in disbelief as the Honorable Rigathi Gashagua went to great length and the Honorable Otiende Amolo told us this morning, if you have to spend two hours, two hours on national TV to defend corruption and tell the world how you are not corrupt, you are definitely corrupt. Honorable Speaker, the Deputy President with his legal team submitted their defense late at 4 p.m. this afternoon, imagining that we will not have the time to go through this voluminous document. If you go through what Rigathi Gashagwa was telling you here, on Olive Garden Hotel, he claims that this hotel was sold by executors to a third party. Honorable Speaker, if you peruse through the documents, the third party that is said to have bought this hotel, Honorable Speaker, and allow me, Honorable Speaker, first to tell you that the joint executors of the will of the late Governor Nderitu Gashagua were Rigathi Gashagua, Advocate Njoroge Regeru, and one Mr. Mwai, who was said to have been his great friend, Mwai Madenge. And Honorable Speaker, if you read the report filed in court by the joint will executors, filed on the 27th of June this year, it says in the report that the joint will executors will make decisions independently of the beneficiaries and without influence from any beneficiary. 
except for one who is both a beneficiary and an executor. The joint will executors does not have the same attributes and mandates as for trustees, where beneficiaries would play a part assisting in decision making. What this is saying, Honorable Speaker, a document filed in court, is that regarding Ashagua, as a joint will executor, was also a beneficiary of the estate of his late brother. He was not only a joint will executor, he was also a beneficiary, and he was also a purchaser for value of the estate of his late brother. Olive Gardens is said to have been sold to one gentleman that many of us know, the Honorable Gishimu Givenji, the member for Gishugu, will tell you that the gentleman who is listed here as a purchaser for value for Olive Gardens, one Peterson Jomo Mushira, was a candidate in Gishugu, Gishugu constituency. He is a direct proxy of one Rigavi Geoffrey Gashagua. An honorable speaker, I must confess, and I am sorry to my friend Peterson because I know him. I just called him this afternoon when I saw this document. And I asked him whether TM Civil Engineering Limited is his company, and he confirmed to me it is indeed his company. I therefore want to tell you Olive Gardens was purchased through the proxy of Peterson Jomo Mushira with zero shares and TM Civil Engineering Limited with 6,000 shares. Those who have visited the Annex House, the Office of the Deputy President, know this Jomo is a permanent fixture in the Office of the Deputy President, and therefore his direct proxy. Honorable Speaker, we are also told, Honorable Speaker, that these very hardworking young Kenyans, in the names of Keith Ikino Rigavi and Kevin Gashagwe Rigavi, who are listed on the CR12 of the documents that were tabled this afternoon by Rigavi, are shareholders of Vipingo Beach Resort that owns the Vipingo property in Kilifi County. The one the Honorable Chonga was speaking about. Rigavi Gashagua told Kenyans on national TV that this property is still owned by the family and therefore is still part of the estate. Keith Ikino and Kevin Gashagua, his sons, were not joint will executors of the estate of Nderito Gashagua. And the owners who are listed on this year 12 is Keith Ikino Rigavi, Kevin Gashagua Rigavi, and the estate of the deceased James Deritu Gashagua. It is a rather ingenious way of trying to hide behind the estate of his late brother. And how shameful, Honorable Speaker, that the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya would hide behind the veil of the estate of his late brother to disguise what is outright proceeds of crime because he is a purchaser of this property and that is why his two sons are listed as directors and shareholders of Vipingo Ridge, of Vipingo Beach Resort. But he was on national TV telling Kenyans, this is a property that belongs to the family and we have decided to keep it. This is a House of Records, Honorable Speaker, and it is good we gave the Honorable Rigavi Gashagua an opportunity to be heard so that we can expose his lies in broad daylight or this early in the evening. And I want to tell Kenyans and all of you members, save this country from this dark face, Honorable Speaker. Honorable members, save this country, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, because of time, I know there was alluding, Honorable Speaker, if you look at the time this company, Vipingo Beach Resort, was formed, it was founded on 5th August 20, 2008. I would guess if Keith Gashagua is 31 years old today, 
At the time this company was registered, he was only 15 years old or 14 years old. He cannot have been listed as a director. His younger brother must have been 12 or 13. For heaven's sake, Deputy President, give some credit. Honorable Speaker, we also had the issue of shareholding, Honorable Speaker. And we were told that in our coalition agreements, Honorable Speaker, and you are then the leader of Ford Kenya. And you know you never subscribe to shareholding in our coalition agreements within Kenya Kwanzaa. Anybody who subscribed to the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition was subscribing not to shares, but to an ideology, a shared ideology, not shareholding, as Rigathi Gashagua wants Kenyans to believe. Honorable Speaker, let me finish by saying, Honorable Speaker, that the mountain is intact. The mountain is intact. The mountain is intact. The mountain is intact. The mountain is named after Kenya because it belongs to all the people of Kenya. We must end ethnic balkanization. Give him another two, three minutes. Honorable Speaker, I was saying to conclude, to end the balkanization of our country into ethnic fiefdoms under the control of warlords, we must send Rigadi Gashagua home today. To end divisive politics in our country, Rigadi must. To end the culture of impunity, conflict of interest, abuse of office, state capture, and corruption in high office. Rigathi must. For accountability, for there to be integrity in the political governance of our country. Rigathi Gashagua must. For leaders in high office to bear policy and political responsibility. Rigathi Gashagua must. For national unity for the fight against graft to bear fruit, for peace and prosperity of our nation as one indivisible whole, one nation under one flag, one people who love their country, who love peace, who want to see a cohesive and working government serving them. Rigadimas? Rigadimas? I submit Rigadimas go.